Hi everybody, I'm Denis Kosakov and I play for Football Basia Girls and I also do modeling. Uh, I'm really good in astronomy, uh, which nobody really expected. And I'm really good at space. I'm also really, really good at maths. And I also like video games, which at some games, I actually, I'm really close to doing professionally. I'm like really, really good at FIFA. Uh, I am like 16 and 4, so I'm like to that team that, is, that, hasn't, that I haven't spent a single penny on, which in my opinion is really good. I've scored over 200 goals with them. Insane. I love them so much. I can speak four languages fluently, which is Catalan, Russian, and Spanish, and English. And then I'm also studying Chinese. My friends would probably describe me if I were as like, uh, quiet when, whenever there's no need to talk. Talks too much whenever he has to talk. Uh, cannot finish sentences. I can't finish sentences. Always wants to play seriously, like in football, and always normally too serious. And, one well, extra, never too serious. Because I normally, I don't like interrupt the class, I don't like talk while I shouldn't. So, most of it's just think that I, that I just do my homework, I do classwork, right? I don't like, you know, so most teachers think that I'm just a good student. I was born in Russia, in Novosibirsk, which is like the capital of Siberia. It's like very cold there. It's like very close to Mongolia. Uh, I'd probably be playing football, I'm guessing, because my father was a pro footballer, but he got injured at 16 and retired. Um, I think I would be playing, but I wouldn't be playing that well, because the coaches in Russia are just not as good as he is in Spain. And in Spain, like, academy football is taken really seriously. That's why most of the times academy football like, from Spain are the best ones. The only reason that I'm this good now is because I live here in Spain and thanks to the best goalkeeper coach in the world, Paco Rodri. Uh, yeah. It is the hardest position in football, that's 100%. It's not the hardest uh, physically, but it's the hardest psychologically. Most of the times, if a striker misses an open net, it doesn't really matter, unless it's like really important. But a goalkeeper, whenever he messes up, it's usually a goal. Like, 90% of the times it's a goal. Uh, and every single mistake is really, really obvious. Uh, like, sometimes like they might pressure the center backs, but whenever the ball's at the goalkeeper's feet, they won't. Shooting is really, really easy, because getting a really good power on a shot is very easy. But then, if a shot, with really big power, you still gotta block it if it's like going somewhere close to you, and that's really really hard to do. It's way harder than just kick it. Actually, the funny part is that a goalkeeper doesn't stay focused. Like let's just say your team is attacking, and you're just like looking right, like pretty much praying to God for like a striker to like create a perfect shot. If they've got the ball and it's like really far away, you'd normally like look around a lot, and then whenever they kick, everything goes in slow motion. Yeah, everything goes in like slow motion and like. I know, it's like really weird. Also, you know how you have got like shower thoughts? Same thing when you're a goalkeeper. Whenever like your, your uh, team is attacking and they've got a corner, you're gonna have some kind of shower thoughts and you're gonna be like by yourself just thinking about something random. It's just so weird. And also whenever they've got like a shot from really close up and you're gonna do like a crazy reaction save, everything goes in slow mo- like so slow motion. Everything, like you've got that weird feeling in you. And whenever you see that you can actually make the save, that is like one of the best feelings ever. Even before you make it, it's just crazy. It's so weird. Apart from just being a giver, I'm also a model. 
Uh, being a model at times it gets quite annoying, you can say, because like let's say you just came off train, right? And you just want to like relax, you know, like be on the phone for a while, right? Um, but then somebody's gonna be filming you, you know, uh, some that somebody's my mom, <laughs> and somebody might like walk up to you and hey, can I have a picture, right? And it gets tiring, but you always gotta be with a smile. There's like a lot of brand deals, right, that ask you to make a video for them, or like kids that want you to make a video for them, right, and they actually pay you, which is like a really good part of it. Uh, so I had my first ever account in like about 2020, something like that. Blocked on Instagram, our account, like just deleted, because we do not have the age. We were like, what, 11 years old? And I created another account, which rose to 35,000 and then I got banned and then I created this one and then from there I just passed the 36k line in like two months reached 50k in like at, on the first and 31st of December I already had like 40 something k uh, and then just rose really really fast and like in April I already had 100k and from there everybody was like asking to uh, to make brand deals with me and like once I went to Sweden for uh, skill socks that I'm wearing them right now uh, there another time I had to go to like another city, don't know what city, but yeah, most of the times I just do it here. Hey guys, I'm Isaac with this E and this is Dennis. And since I wanted to learn how to be a keeper, he's going to show me some pointers and the basics. So one of the most important things in goalkeeping is the basic positioning. Because when you've got the good positioning, most of the times it will be quite easy to stop a shot. If you're badly positioned and there's a shot from about there, if you're badly positioned right here, you've got the whole entire second post open. If you're badly positioned on the second post, you've got the whole entire first post open. And then it becomes really easy to score. But if you're well positioned, about in between, but leaving more of your first post than second post. So basically his first tip to me was positioning. So if there's a shot from a weird angle, you don't want to be too far over here or too far right here by the first post, but you want to be kind of in the middle, more to the first post than the last post, but that'll make the shot really difficult. Also, the second most important tip I'll be a keeper is being in the right basic position, is what we call it here in Spain. It's been like this, with both of your legs down and your knees bent and your back like a C shape. Like this, you can save any possible shot that goes down or up. His second tip to me was this position. He said that it was the basic position and that in this position, you can stop any ball low or high. Also, one of the most important factors in a good goalkeeper is being able to come out of the line. What do I mean by that? Whenever there is a cross, where more or less you're going to reach it before the striker, you should always come out because it's way better for you to catch the ball than to let the striker intercept it. Or whenever there's a through ball and you've got to run outside of the box to just kick it out, it's way better than letting the striker go in the 1v1. So Dennis's third tip was don't just hang out in one spot. If you can, go out and get that ball, especially on crosses. See, that was kind of easy. Then tip number four, which is the most important one, and it's quite obvious, the diving and catching abilities. Of course, when you're a goalkeeper, you're supposed to be able to dive and catch the ball. The most important tip is dive and catch the ball. Because, of course, when you're a goalkeeper, you want to save the ball. See, that's how you... So you're not supposed to be so scared of this goalpost because you're supposed to be one step ahead of the goal line, so you should never hit this goalpost. Perfect. And most of the teams are in Barcelona, like 90% of them. So we always have to travel there by bus whenever it's an away game. And um, whenever it's a game at at our home, like here at Reus, it's always a game at like 3 p.m., 2 p.m., so the other team has time to come here. If it's like against Barcelona or Espanol, I'm gonna try to get as prepared as possible, right? As many trainings as possible. Uh, then I probably wake up, right? Eat 
breakfast to eat porridge, like Russian porridge, which is really, really healthy for games. Um, then just like chill around a little bit, get prepared, you know, you know, get mentally prepared. Um, you know, kind of like think about what's gonna happen, what I'm gonna do. Uh, then I'll probably like grab my clothes, put it all together, you know, grab my backpack, go to the game. Uh, and then when I'm in the dressing room, I always go shin guards first, uh, and then, the, then mayas, which are like long pants that are below your pants, and then protective pants that protect you from falling down, and then uh, a technica, which is like something that you put on below your t-shirt, then a normal t-shirt, and then I put on my boots and I will not take, and I'm not gonna take out my gloves nor my uh, water bottle before like the coach enters. I can only do it when the coach enters, which is what gives me good luck. Uh, but you cannot like you cannot just psychologically not accept that it's gonna help you. Even though I know perfectly it will not at all, but psychologically just cannot like say nah, it's not gonna help you. Yeah, I'm not too superstitious, but I've got some before game. So it's like very very difficult because most of my classmates right like they go to school they'll get back home and they've got the whole entire day for themselves they can play the ps4 uh but me right i get home at 4 30 i've got 30 minutes to go to the bathroom eat change prepare everything which is crazy uh, that's why i always come like exactly on time <laughs> And then I get home, I still have to do homework, and I still have to do a workout. And it's like already nine something, and, the, and there's like Champions League night, and I cannot miss a Champions League night. But I still have to do the workout, and I still have to do the homework, it's just so bad. I do have a favorite uh, goalkeeper, which is Oblak from Atletico Madrid. He's from Slovenia or Slovakia, I think Slovenia. He's like really good in reaction saves, and just like saves in general. Neuer though, he's in my opinion the best keeper in history of football. He can play really really well with his feet. He invented the sweeper keeper role. Um, his handling is crazy. And then my and then in my opinion the second best keeper ever is Buffon. This case is a legend, 42 years old, still playing football. Um, crazy how he won me until the World Cup pretty much. I just love his reaction saves, even though he isn't really good with his feet. Like, the getting nervous part, I don't know why I, like, before at my first year with girls, for some reason, I was really, I was never nervous in my whole entire life. And that one season, like the last two games where we won the league, I was really nervous for some reason. I don't know why. It was really, really weird. Uh, but I don't really get nervous and I don't even know why. I don't know why I never get nervous. Um, and I'm probably one of the only keepers that whenever I do a mistake, I do not like go down and be like, oh wow, that made a mistake. Like I, I was playing a game uh, this Monday. It was the final. Uh, against some Japanese team, like a pro Japanese team, right? One of the best there. Um, we were running up, right? Like fifth, like seventh minute of the game. I went to kick the ball out and I slipped. And then the striker got the ball and, and scored. Uh, and somehow I didn't go down and I made a perfect game. I made a really, really good save too. So yeah, I don't know how I, get, I don't get nervous. I think it's just accidental that I don't get nervous. <laughs> I 
racing, like whenever they race with cars, it has to be that quick, like that kind of reaction time, right? So any like little bit, like a hundred grams that you get, right, of muscle, that's already gonna make you slower. And you're still gonna be strong, like really, really strong, but not but lean, like also lean at the same time. So I just do push-ups and sit-ups for now, right? Because I'm still a kid. I haven't, I started puberty, but only a while ago. Um, but probably in the future, I'll start like doing like weights, like lifting and things. If you look at like most keepers, right, like Ali, Saunders, Stegen, Courtois, they're strong. But whenever they put those like tight shirts, right? Because now it's for some reason cool to put them on, right? In games, um, like you do not see the muscle. Like you look at it and you go, wow, he's really thin. Uh, I don't eat anything like that's unhealthy. I might eat it once, and the only time I actually eat it is like, there is I've got a game on Saturday, I will play my game on Saturday, and then on Sunday my brother's got a game. Only then I'm out to like, go to the bar, maybe get one thing of choice that I want. And the only like unhealthy, unhealthy things that I can eat is like dark chocolate, like dark, dark chocolate with my porridge in the morning. Creative in football is important. Like, I'm really creative in like the football aspect. It's like, let's say, I've got my own tactics that I think I'm the first one to invent them. Because my team right now that I play really well with my feet, but it's like a Barca Tiki Taka style, but like about 70% of the time, it's me with the ball. Like, they pass it to me, right? And as many, many teams are, these are the best teams in Catalonia, right? Which would be the equivalent of the best teams in like, USA, you know, something like that. I'm playing against them, right? And like, they know really well how to pressure, you know, of course. Um, and I kind of like have to get out of that pressure, but not like by dribbling them, but like making a fake pass. Like normally what I like, what I at least like, there's two options there. Like, it's putting my ball on the right foot and pretend as if I'm gonna go long to my right back, which is how my team plays. Because many, many times we just pass it to our right back over the striker's head and we start an attack from there. Pretend that's how I'm gonna do that. The striker will normally go to the right back, right? like second, like walk into him. But then I'll pass it to the center back, which gives him more space and he might create something from that. Also, one that I like is I just keep on going forward up until somebody pressures me, and then one of our one of my midfielders will come back, and I'm gonna pass it to him, and he's gonna pass it to the center back from where the um, the striker came from. And that's like two options that I really really like, and if. Like, I cannot do it if I'm just gonna kick it out, right, as, as high and as far as I possibly can. And, yeah, and from there it's just luck. Now we're gonna work on dribbling. Look, make sure that he doubts where you're gonna go, so he doesn't know if you're gonna go to the left or right, and just be unpredictable. like family in sports there's a sport right a martial arts sport that my grandpa's dad something like that was really really good i think i think i hold the record i hold the record for my age or like at least for the nine year olds or ten year olds i think uh here in this province i went like 47 and zero at some point which i think is a record of my age to this day then my dad played in uh csk moscow the best club in russia and um, he was going to be like in the starting 11 at 16 he had a really bright future ahead of him, but he got injured, a knee injury at uh, 16 years old, and he never played again. My mom was really, 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 really sporty. Uh, actually, none of my parents, nor grandparents, nor grand grandparents, were a, a goalkeeper, right? So you definitely can, even though it's not like from your family, you definitely can with the right coach. I had, I'm lucky that I got the best coach back on the day. I'm very lucky with that. I actually don't have a single funny story because like. In full, right, I play like at a professional level, like it's counted as a professional level in Spain. There's only seven leagues like this in Spain, and I play in one of them. So with math, it's pretty much like impossible to get into one of these, right? And so everybody's too, like very serious, like as if it's professional football, right? So there's nothing funny there at all. There's a single funny moment. 
Um, in martial arts, there wasn't really anything funny. Uh, I don't have anything funny in my life at all. Apart from cats, there's nothing funny. <laughs> Getting sponsored, right? Um, my first ever sponsor was RG. For me, the best possible uh, goalkeeper gloves um, brand. I'm probably gonna use them for the rest of my life because uh, I really, really enjoy how like they're thick, right? So like it's good protection. They block really, really well, and I love the ones that are like anti-water, something like that. So whenever it rains, it doesn't like slip through, right? Cause I tried Nike gloves, I tried Adidas, the ones that were like two hundred dollars. They were really, really good, amazing. But after like a day, they they were just like all like pretty much wasted or something like that, like broken. About RG, right? So first, they didn't want to sponsor me because I was not eighteen years of age. Uh, cause they only sponsor if you're eighteen years old. Uh, but I wasn't. <laughs> I was, at that time I think I was only thirteen. Uh, and I pretty much begged them to sponsor me, which they agreed to. And uh, they were like my first kind of sponsor, which I love. I love it. I love RG. Uh, and then my second sponsor, I think it was... I think it was for goal pretty sure. It is an amazing app that I really, really like for football content. Especially like whenever um, it's match day. I really like watching it. Because normally there's like football edits, right? And kind of gets me a little bit motivated. Uh, and then my next one was probably Skill Silk. I think it was before Skill Socks. It's like Real Madrid style. And then after that, like Skill, I got Skill Socks as a brand. I actually love them. Brand deals will a hundred percent come to you whenever you're a professional athlete already. Like whenever you make it, like what you're gonna be sixteen, seventeen, and you're making it in like the pro league or something like that, you're gonna get a brand deal a million percent. No chance you don't get one. Even if it's like some random brand, but you will still get one hundred percent. You have to wait a certain percent. Uh and if you really, really want one now, you have to really really confident speaking, you have to be confident um to wear it, to show it, and you have to have like a big account. Most of the times what I prefer is stuff. I'd normally be like, oh yeah, better just give me. It's like RG, right? They send me gloves, like a lot of them. I use like 25 of their purse per year. Like even more, maybe. Just a bunch of them, right? Because I just love it. Four goal gives me a kind of like special usage type of thingy, like a code, right? Uh, for the app, which I also really, really love. Yeah, some of them sometimes send me money, but I'd rather like their products. Uh, one of my favorite quotes by somebody, I can tell you the name later, um, which is like, whenever like I woke up to heaven, right, um, and like God is like listing other people, right, and talking to them, right, and then I come up, right, it's my turn, and there's like a massive board, and he says, uh, professional goalkeeper, billionaire, massive brand, brand massive brand deals, uh, really strong, one of the most influential people on the planet. Um, and God goes, is that you? And I go, no, no, that's not me. That's definitely not me. And then God tells me that that's who you could have been if you weren't so lazy. Yeah, that, that's a good one.